Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Disney Interactive co-presidents John Pleasants and Jimmy Pataro. Thank you very much. Um, first, let me say how privileged we feel to be representing Disney Interactive here today at our first B23 Arena presentation. Over the past few years, we've been hard at work on a number of big projects. We've handpicked a few to share with you here today. What you all will see are products that extend Disney's history of creativity and storytelling across new devices and interactive <coughs> platforms, and that bring the best of Disney to bear in new ways that we think will really excite you. Again, since, since this is Disney Interactive's inaugural D23 presentation, we first wanted to share a little bit about who we are. Our mission at Disney Interactive is to entertain kids and families everywhere with world-class products and content that push the boundaries of technology and imagination. Or, more succinctly put, as our friend John Lasseter says, our business model is quality and our focus is on delivering quality experiences across all the new and exciting devices and platforms. Technology has a long heritage for Walt Disney Company, originating with Walt, who described himself as an inventor and a technologist. From the beginning, he was fascinated with technology and its abilities to push the boundaries of storytelling. In fact, Disney was one of the first producers to use Technicolor, high-fidelity stereo soundtracks, and in-house creations like the multi-plane camera and computer-generated animation. Now in 2013, Disney Interactive carries forward that tradition with stories and digital experiences that push the boundaries of entertainment yet again. Today we have four products to show you that deliver magical new experiences. First, Fantasia Music Evolved, a new video game that brings together music, movement, and creativity like never before. Second, two new video shorts from Disney.com. Blank, a Vinylmation love story, and Small World. Third, a groundbreaking new app called Disney Animated. This app takes you deep inside the world of Disney animation, allowing you to experience your favorite Disney moments like never before. And finally, we'll close with Disney Infinity, the most ambitious creative endeavor <laughs> ever undertaken. In our division, Disney Interactive. Okay, we're going to kick it off with Fantasia, and I'm thrilled to do this for several reasons. First, Fantasia is so closely tied to the legacy of innovation and storytelling at this company that it provides a perfect origin and inspiration to build from. Second, music and play are universal. As Plato said, music gives a soul to the universe wings to the mind, flight to imagination, and life to everything. And third, as you will see, Fantasia Music Evolved is a pioneering platform and spectacle that enables you to physically interact with music, visual creativity, and each other in an unprecedented fashion. Specifically, Fantasia Music Evolved is a motion game for Xbox Connect coming in 2014. In Fantasia, thank you, in Fantasia, <laughs> players will not only create new music of their own, but also perform and transform songs from their favorite artists. Now, how do you enter such a world where there's really only one way? You step into the role of the Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey. Woo! You really need to see this to fully understand what it all means, so I'm going to introduce a short video and invite the game developers to demonstrate this game for you. Please roll the video. In 1928, Disney released the first animated cartoon with a completely synchronized sound design. The innovative cartoon became incredibly popular and received wide critical acclaim for its seamless combination of sound and animation. This led Walt Disney in 1938 to create Fantasia. This ambitious and revolutionary movie was the first feature-length film ever to combine animation and classical music. In 1940, Fantasia was released exclusively to cinemas equipped with the pioneering Fantasound system. What you're going to see are the designs and pictures and stories that music inspired in the minds and imaginations of a group of artists. 
It was the first time ever such a synergy between audio and visual on the scene, changing the role between animation and music forever. In 1999, the long-awaited sequel was released. Fantasia 2000 was the first full-length animated feature released exclusively in IMAX theaters. And now, get ready for the next chapter in Fantasia Magic. For the first time ever, with Fantasia Music Evolved, you can touch music and transform some of your favorite tracks with your movements. This revolutionary, genre-defining title is a mix of motion, music, and animation. Classical tracks are met with popular artists and a breathtaking musical world for you to explore. At Harmonix, we're constantly doing research about new ways to interact with music. When I found out about this project, the possibility of doing Fantasia as a video game, it just blew my mind. I mean, it was literally a dream come true. Both companies figured out right away that this was the perfect match and we had to go and do this game. Just like what Walt Disney was trying to do back in 1940, you know, we have the opportunity to do that again today. It's time to put on your sorcerer's hat, jump in, and feel the magic for yourself. demonstration, please welcome to the stage Chris Nichols, the executive producer of Fantasia Music Evolved, and John Drake, the director of brand management at Harmonics. Good afternoon. I'm Chris Nichols, and today we're really excited to be at D23 to share Disney Fantasia Music Evolved an all-new adventure in color, sound, and motion inspired by the film Fantasia. For those not familiar, in 1940, Disney released Fantasia, a captivating animated film that featured several animated shorts set to classical music. The animation went hand-in-hand -hand with the music, and the result was a film where viewers could hear the pictures and see the music. It was breathtaking, revolutionary, and sometimes abstract, most importantly, an entirely new way for audiences to connect with music. And for me, one of the most evocative and enduring expressions of Disney magic. Once we decided to revisit Walt's vision of color, sound, and motion, we knew we had to partner with a developer who not only understood games, but embraced music in exactly the same way that Walt had which is why we decided to partner with the world's leading music game developer, Harmonix. With that, I'd like to hand it over to John Drake. Thanks, Chris. When Disney approached Harmonix to bring Fantasia to the world of video games, we were obviously overjoyed. Fantasia can be evolved, uh, rips off the core concepts of Walt's original vision for the film, and invites the player into a fantastic experience, totally unique in gaming, music, and interactive entertainment. In Disney Fantasia Music Evolved, you are invited to become the new apprentice of legendary sorcerer Yen Sid and enter the magical realm of Fantasia, a world composed entirely of music and magic. Players will explore dozens of stunning environments, bringing worlds to life with stunning audio and visuals. And along the way, you'll perform over 30 songs transforming and remixing tracks ranging from classical music to today's top hits, adding your personal expression to your favorite music. <laughs> Disney Fantasia Music Evolved is a game that's all about musical discovery. We want you to feel the power of creating music yourself. So through motion gameplay with Kinect, we'll immerse you in the magical world of Fantasia as Walt intended. Now, the power of Fantasia can be difficult to explain. It's as much about our emotions and our experiences as it is about the story. So it may be easier to show you than to tell. I'd like to welcome Annette Gonzalez from Harmonix to the stage to give us a live demonstration. We got the source of Prince Color. Um, so, drawing inspiration from the film, we've created a wide variety of fantastic realms for the Sorcerer's Apprentices out there to explore and bring to life. 
each with a unique art style and a unique soundtrack. Today we're going to take a quick tour of one of these worlds, an underwater coral oasis that we call the Shoal. Let's take a look. So we brought Annette into this world of the Shoal, and you can see the connect camera in front of her as she steps from left to right. The camera follows her around this panorama. She can explore this interactive tableau just by moving, getting a different look and feel as it parallaxes around her. Wide edge, the light's kind of a quiet morning in the shoal, some depth and sunlight coming through the top of the waves. But then raises her hand up, she can bring up what we call the muse. Now, Yen Sid bestows the muse upon you as a sorcerer's apprentice when you first enter the workshop, and he tells you this is what you use to bring the world to life, to inspire the world with its creative energy. So, Ned's already found something to inspire. She's found some seahorses, and the seahorse carries up here. It's a lightweight instrument, and that's going to make them all appear in a little circle, and then we'll hear if there's maybe some musical payoff she gets them. to start the demo. That magic uh, is collected at the top progress bar there. Those little prisms of the magic that's embedded in the universe. Yen Sid sent you out to find and bring back to the workshop to become the source of the premise. Now, that transformed the world in a little way, but to make the world an even bigger transformation, we're going to play some songs. So that's going to reach up to Bohemian Rhapsody there, pinch the zoom, fly through the back plane into a star field, calling out to Mickey when he conducted the heavens and the seas when he fell asleep in the Sorcerer's Apprentice. And this is performance gameplay. So this is Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. And that's going to play. She could uh, play however she feels like. She could play as a dancer, as a sorcerer, as a conductor. And with her motion, she's going to bring the song to life and actually choose between three remixes. In this case, a remix that is the original master recording, a classical orchestration, and a hard rock 80s mix. And she'll weave those mixes together and then create her own custom melodies over the top as we go through. So let's take a look at performance gameplay and Fantasia Music of All. This is Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody.
transform the region by your performance, and you'll be able to share that out with your friends around the world, which is really exciting. Now, all that energy that I flew into that song is now flooded back into the shoal, which again is one of our many, many environments we'll be able to explore in the game. It's for what we call a transformation key, a pool of pure magical energy that will bring the world to life in big, sweeping ways. So that key, when swept, makes that coral reef turn into a turtle and a coral reef on its back. Because why not? He also brings in the piano melody from Bohemian Rhapsody time back in the performance you just did. Uh, but that turtle's not just a set piece, it's not just another great character in the world of Disney and Fantasia. He's also a musical instrument himself, so if Annette hovers over there and pinches the zoom again, she'll be able to fly in the back of the turtle and play our favorite instrument in the show, which we call the jazz clans. It's a real thing. So these jazz clans are musical mullets on the back of the turtle. Each different kind of clan represents a piece of a jazz drum set. We'll teach you the instrument step by step, showing you each thing from the tom-toms to the kick drum. And once you explore the whole instrument, we allow you to record your own awesome custom drum fill that will fly back into the world with you and join the underscore for the show itself. There's tons of these instruments throughout the game, they're amazingly playable, and they're a lot of fun with the pure creativity that we think Fantasia deserves. As you can see Annette is tracing a different pattern here. It's got a little record and playback. She can put her hand down here and back to see if she likes it. Like that one? She likes it. She'll put her hands up, she'll zoom back out in the show, and those jazz guys will come with her and play her, her solo in the middle of the music. So the custom animation, custom music that you're creating, and some of the greatest songs from the classical and contemporary hits, we think the Fantasia Musical Ball really embodies the spirit of what Walt wanted in Fantasia. Thanks so much for doing that demo. We got one more thing to show you though, so don't go anywhere just yet. Uh, in June, at E3, we announced Night on Bald Mountain as the first classical track that we're going to feature from the original film soundtrack. So today, for the very first time, and just for this D23 audience, an SMA give you an exclusive look at the amazing gameplay that you'll experience when you perform Night on Bald Mountain in the game. Let's take a look at what that's like. To make that music interactive, we've gone a bit further in recreating these iconic songs. 
Let's now take another D23 exclusive behind the scenes look at how we're creating the dizzy magic behind the music.
do a fantastic, just to let you all know, that song that they just played is actually playable in the game. Okay, so at B23 this year, you've no doubt seen and heard about some amazing long-form content coming from our movie studio, like Frozen, Maleficent, Cinderella, and Tomorrowland. And of course, later today, many of you will be attending the screening of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. from ABC. Well, at Disney Interactive, we're also passionate about content creation. We are leveraging the interactive medium to tell Disney stories that, like all of our other entertainment, represent the promise of the Disney brand by exhibiting high quality and, of course, a ton of heart. And we're now expanding our short-form content efforts with digital extensions that bring to life some of the most popular and classic Disney brands and experiences. Today, we want to introduce two new short-form series launching soon on Disney.com that are uniquely rooted in Disney's heritage and culture. Since Vinylmation was introduced in 2008, millions have been sold and traded by fans around the world. With more than 2,000 designs to date, Vinylmation has become a true Disney phenomenon. But have you ever wondered where these figures come from? What's their origin? Most importantly, what's their story? That's the question our Disney Interactive creative team decided to explore in our new series, Blank, a Vinylmation love story. Blank is a special 12 episode series created using beautiful stop motion animation. To do this, we built, it, we built intricate sets in our Burbank studio, and our team spends one full day to produce each 15 to 20 seconds of content. Now, I'm excited to show you a first look at Blank.
Thank you. And to help create excitement for the new series, and to give you some understanding as to where we're going with the characters and storyline, we've created a short trailer that we think embodies the heart of the series. Check it out. This is one of those moments. Disney Animated is a new app that just launched this past Thursday and is the result of a special collaborative effort among Disney, uh, Disney Interactive, Walt Disney Animation Studios, Disney Publishing, and the very successful premium app developer, Touch Press. Using the technology of the iPad, Disney Animated puts the magic of animation at your fingertips. The app takes you inside the creative process of animation it gets you closer than we ever dreamed possible to the actual art and tools used to create our films. 
With Animated, you can explore all 53 Disney animated films, from Snow White to the upcoming feature Frozen, through mo mo multiple modes and interactive experiences. You'll get access to an astonishing amount of content, including storyboards, clips, art, sound, images, and special interviews, all presented in a way to provide you a comprehensive and truly captivating new digital experience. Many of the artifacts you see in this app are currently in the Studio Archives Department at Burbank under lock and key. And this type of interactive access is a very special thing. We also included many interactive workshops so people can try their hand at animating and learn by using the actual tools and technologies our animators currently use to produce all of your favorite movies. We hope that by granting access like this, we can inspire a whole new generation of animators to make the films that will entertain us in the future. In the short time since launch, Animated has already captured the hearts of many fans and press who are raving about the digital experience. We're also very excited to see that it's currently ranked as a top app in the App Store charts and was chosen by Apple as the Editor's Choice application in both the US and the UK. But it's obviously far more exciting to see it than to talk about it. So with that, I want to bring up Teo Gray, the founder of TouchPress and the co-author of this amazing product to show, what it, to show us what it offers. Teo? They told me my iPad had gone to sleep and I panicked. Um, so it's great to be here. Uh, Animation is a topic about which so much has been written and said. Literally thousands of books, documentaries, DVD extras, museum exhibits. It's intimidating. Uh, like, who are we to try to add to that legacy, to try to tell the story of Disney animation again in a different way? So when Disney came to us um, and wanted to do some kind of an app, we did what we always do at Touch Press, which is we tried to rethink from the ground up how ought one to tell this story in the modern world of interactive media and tablets. Um, you know, what should you do if that's the medium that you're communicating in? And it turns out that animation is actually a topic that works really well. It's almost crying out for this sort of way of telling stories. Because animation is about pictures that move. That's what it's about. Um, and you can do that in, in, in this form. So I want to show you the app. I'll get up the home page here. This is the home page of Disney Animated. And you can see there's two main sections to the app. Across the top, you have um, the story of how animated movies are made. And along the bottom, you have a set of interactive experiences that let you get sort of hands-on in that world. Let's look at the, the story part first. Now, if you ask anybody at Disney, where does, where does a Disney app movie come from? They'll always tell you it starts with a story. That's, it starts with a story. It's the same answer to everybody. And so, you know, that's what we figured we bet our app better start with a story, too. So, chapter about stories. Um, and then we go through the stages of production, visual development, character, layout and backgrounds. Eventually you get the animation. I was surprised how long it takes before you actually get to doing animation. Visual effects all the way through um, the final process of putting together a movie and releasing it. That's, each of these is a chapter. Let's go look at the chapter on characters. So this is a page that you might see in any print book about Disney animation. And there's a problem which is that these pictures are not moving. They should be moving. They're all scenes, clips, out of animated films. So what you can do here is you can touch it. And we should be hearing it. There we go. This is what you should be seeing when you're reading about animation. You should be seeing the actual animation. Let's go to the next page here. You should be seeing that not just for a few of the clips. You should be seeing it for all of them. So on this page, every single thing on here is a little clip. I won't let them all play because there's some are long, some are short. Every single thing, I can touch it and it moves. We've <laughs> 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 on the next page. Now, of course, not everything to do with animation is a clip. 
Uh, some things are uh, a biz dev art, things like that. This is an example of something that I find particularly fascinating. This is an animation maquette. Um, it's used as reference by the, the animators to draw from different angles. These things are locked up in the animation research library, and you can't, you can't get to these things. Absolutely nobody can touch these things other than the curators with white gloves. You just can't see them. Unless you have this app, in which case you can take your finger and swipe this thing and turn it as if you were holding it in your hand. Uh, it was quite an ordeal to get them to agree to let us photograph these things this way. Um, and there's a bunch of them in the app. So that's kind of the idea, is that there's different sorts of things in, in this book, and we let you interact with each one of them in a way that makes the most sense for that kind of material. I'm going to go through here, I want to get to a particular page, um, partly to show you a certain thing on that page, and partly just because I want to kind of blow your mind about how much is in this book. Um, it just keeps going. There's stuff from Frozen that you haven't seen anywhere, there's stuff that you don't see anywhere else. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff. Um, and remember, that all moves up. Here's the page, here's the page I wanted to get to. This is uh, the beautiful background paintings from some of the early movies. Any one of these could be in an art museum. Um, what's, the, what's the best way, to, how should you interact with this thing? Like if you had this painting, this is an Ivan Earl background from uh, Sleeping Beauty, but if this was in your living room, what would you do with it? You might sell it and retire, um, <laughs> but if you didn't want to do that, you might look at it. You might walk up to it. You might lean in a little bit. You might get out a magnifying glass. Um, and so what you can do here in the app is, you can get right up to it. You can see the individual brush strokes. Very, very high resolution scan. Higher quality, higher resolution has ever been available anywhere. Uh, and we have that for a bunch of these classic, beautiful backgrounds, as well as other kinds of visual development art. Uh, so I've shown you everything except how we present actual animation. Keep going here, we'll get to the chapter on animation. Um, I'll show you this clip. So this is a scene from Lion King. When you watch this in the, in the you know, as you're watching the movie, you see it as a finished work. You see this piece of video that streams out. But that's not really how animators think about this stuff. They think about it in terms of a series of images that need to work together and that came from some place, that were created in some way. So we let you peel back those layers. I can slide my finger down here, and I'm sliding here between the finished cells, the, the story panels, the cleanup animation. I can go back and forth. I can see what the relationship is between the cleanup frames and the final cells. Uh, this is something you've never been able to do. Not even anybody at Disney has been able to examine and study their work this way. And it makes you feel, you know, it makes you feel closer to the people who made this in a way that's difficult to describe. You really kind of have to Try it for yourself. So that's the story portion of the app. Let me switch gears a little bit here and tell you about the interactive experiences. Um, one of my favorites is from Frozen. I touched it hard enough. Um, so this is as simple as it gets. It's basically a blank screen. And there's one thing you can do, you can swipe it with your finger. And when you do that, you get a flurry of snow. So this is a visual effects, a particle system simulation. It's based on the same algorithm, the same math, the same techniques as uh, are used in creating this effect in the upcoming movie Frozen. Um, there's only 100,000 particles of, of snow here instead of a couple million in the movie, but it's happening in real time, and you're able to art direct this effect with your finger in exactly the same way that the artist working on the movie art direct the special effect that's used in the movie. And because this is an, uh, an app that's about learning, we explain uh, how this is done, what the algorithms and techniques are behind it, uh, and you can read about that and, um, and learn how it works. So this is sort of putting you behind the scenes, letting you get your hands on a tool that's used in the production of the movie. Probably the ultimate example of that that we have in here is this animation workshop. So this is... Uh, uh, the genuine article, this is the actual Penelope, by which I mean it is a CG model derived directly from the model used in the movie. It's great and it's controllable. I can zoom in, I can touch one of the control points if I can see it. Um, I can move 
the joints around. This is designed to work not like a video game, but like the animation software that's used in producing these movies. So it's very flexible, it's completely open-ended, uh, you can do anything you want. And it's keyframe animation, so along the bottom you'll see a set of, of uh, key poses um, that have been laid out in this example. If I slide my finger sideways here, you'll see it, um, it plays out that piece of animation. I can go back and forth between each of the key frames. And if I click play, uh, it will now play out this animation. Because this is a real model, not a, not a canned video, I can do that from any angle. I can watch what's happening from behind. Uh, and perhaps most remarkably, I can actually share this video. I can export it as a, as a movie file, post it to Facebook, Twitter, email, YouTube. Um, we are amazed, within less than 24 hours of releasing this app, there was a video that showed up on YouTube. It was better than anything I had seen done with this tool. And it's, I don't know who did it, if it was one of you guys, let me know, because it was amazing. Um, so, um, uh, that's the first, you know, you've never been able to take a Disney character like this, tell stories with it, and share it with your friends. Uh, you can even send a file that, that your friends, if they have this app, can open in the app and work on your animation and modify it and add to it. Um, so as you can see, this is, a, this is a big and comprehensive app. There's a lot of material in here. And I want to just go a little sort of trip down the rabbit hole. What do I mean by comprehensive? Uh, one of the sections here is called the timeline. This is, uh, this is the complete filmography of the Walt Disney Animation Studios division from uh, Snow White through Frozen. And let's start zooming in and see how, how far we can go. So we can start zooming. You'll see first thing a few more movies show up that didn't fit earlier. Um, now we're down to seeing all the separate movies. Let's pick one and touch this. We get a little film card of this movie. and We have a card for each movie. Uh, it's got the poster, the original movie poster, and the box synopsis, uh, and it's got these guys walking along. Um, go down a little bit. So here are the, the uh, pictures of the major characters in this movie. But that would really not be good enough. These are not pictures. Each one of these is uh, an animated clip. When the world turns its back on you, you turn your back on the world. <laughs> so. Every major character in every movie ever made by Walt Disney Animation Studios, we have a walking, talking, singing, dancing clip where the character, you know, kind of shows off who they are and, and what they're all about. That's pretty comprehensive. Let's keep going. The lower we have iTunes links for all the featured songs. So if you have your favorite songs, they're all collected here in a convenient way. You can get them into your iTunes library. That's pretty cool. And trailers for all, for most of them. Um, and then we have this little strip here at the bottom, these little sort of bar of colors along the very bottom, which you might almost miss. Uh, this is what we call the color map, and it shows the sequence of predominant colors as they occur throughout the movie from start to finish. Uh, and it kind of lets you see what's going on, sort of what mood is going on in a given part of the movie by the colors. If they're bright, happy colors, probably a bright, happy scene if it's dark and you know, maybe that's a, maybe that's not a, maybe that's a scary scene or something. Like, for example, if at the end of Lion King, you know, there's a big fire, uh, and, and then in the battle, and then it's dark, and it's night, and then suddenly it's, it's happy again. You can see that if you look towards the end, right before the black of the credits, you see red, and then dark, and then bright. And if, there, if this isn't clear enough, you can touch the color map, and you can see a thumbnail, which I can swipe through here. So here I'm seeing the fire, and then the dark, and then, happy, 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 everybody's good, and we're the press. So, I'm sweeping through the entire movie here. This is the whole thing. Now, it's thumbnails, and, you know, there's no sound, but it's basically the whole movie. We have this color bar for every movie, every animated feature film made by Walt Disney Animation Studios. We can put them together in one page. So, it's my favorite feature too. Um, so, this is it. Like, this is everything. This is 30 million man hours of work, something like that. Um, from Snow White at the top 
to Wreck-It Ralph at the bottom. Of course, we can't put Frozen in yet because they haven't finished the movie. Can't make a color bar until they finish the movie. Uh, and I can touch this anywhere. I can go forwards and backwards through history. I can go left and right through the movies. So I can see, I just, I love this, I can see everything. <laughs> So when I say comprehensive, that's what I mean by comprehensive. Uh, that's one feature, one of the interactives out of half a dozen that is itself half of this app. Uh, this is a comprehensive app. That's what it's about. Thank you very much. Jimmy, thank you so much for that last 45 minutes of content. That stuff, I think everyone agrees here, that, that is really awesome. Now, to close out this event, we are going to bring you Disney Infinity. Thank you. Thank you. We think it's the perfect crescendo for our day, because as we discussed earlier, it's not only the most ambitious creative initiative we've ever undertaken, in this division. It's also a project that captures Disney magic and innovation and takes it to an entirely new level. We're going to share a lot of information right now about Disney Infinity. And once you see this product, I think you will agree it lives up to the pioneering heritage of this great company. I think John Lasseter said it almost that well when he said how exciting it is to have this inventive platform Infinity where the most fun thing in the game is for kids to be creative and to build. So okay, before we dive into the details of the game, I want to share a bit about the backstory behind Disney Infinity. When we started this process, we wanted to push ourselves to the max and do something that had never been done before, something that only Disney could do, something that would delight Disney fans of any age, and something that would improve with and stand the test of time. We set out to empower you to take control of and expand existing Disney and Pixar worlds. But then we took it one step further by allowing you to bring characters you love into one world where they play together. We wanted to capture that pure sense of freedom and joy when a child or the child in all of us plays with their physical toys on the bedroom floor, bounded only by their own creativity and storytelling. Just like Andy from Toy Story. To do this, we would need to create a world without limits, where the answer to the question, can I do that, is simply yes. Today, we want to show you this world and how it came to life. We have several new announcements today, including a lot of reveals that no one outside the company has ever seen. But for that, I'd like to invite two of the real design and development heroes to the stage. Please welcome John Blackburn, who is Vice President and General Manager of Avalanche, the game studio behind Disney Infinity, and John Vignocchi, the game's executive producer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even believe how many people are here. We've been working on this for like three years. We've been waiting to show everybody all the stuff that we've been making. Yeah, we actually took a bet whether or not this uh, this this arena was going to be full. It looks like it's pretty full. And uh, I, I was betting. Oh. <laughs> all right, thanks, well, thanks to you guys. Thanks. Thanks. All right, so you know, let's let's go ahead and get into this. We've got a lot of cool stuff here to show you today. Um, we're gonna have John walk you through some of the, the some of the early stuff. It's pretty simple, and then we're gonna get into a lot of cool new content. Yeah. So for those of you guys that don't know what Infinity is. That's not a lot of you, but uh, so a week from today, starter pack goes out. Can you believe it? Yes. Starter pack is out. Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, Wii, Wii U, DS, Captain Jack Sparrow, Sully, and Mr. Incredible will be available inside of that starter pack. You're also going to get a playset piece, which gives you access to their three worlds. Now, kind of like. In Tron, you're going to take one of these figures and put them down on the Infinity base, and that's going to bring the character to the digital world of Infinity. 
Now, that starter set comes with Pirates of the Caribbean, playset, at Monsters University, and Incredibles. And the one key thing is that these are open world games. These aren't linear dungeon crawlers. These are true open world games where you can go wherever you want to. It's totally up to you how you play. Now what's fun is that there's a ton of content inside of these that you can then bring together inside of the toy box mode. And the toy box mode is so much fun because for the first time ever, you guys get to be the Disney storytellers. So what we want to do first is go through a few of the different uh, play sets that we've already announced right now. So we're going to start off with Monsters. It's one of the coolest things about this job that we all really enjoy on the development team is we get to work with some of the best storytellers in and across the Disney uh, company. We get to go in, work with them, create stories that actually add to the world, that, that enhance this and show you a little bit more about what each one of those worlds is like. So particularly within Monsters, we were able to work with Dan Scanlon and Kelsey. We went in, took a little slice out of the film where there's uh, Archie, the mascot from Fear Tech, exploded that into a whole new situation where there's a rivalry between these two schools and allow you to go ahead and play through that and play as your, as your favorite scarers within the Monsters world. So just like Monsters University, the Pirates of the Caribbean playset also features a brand new original story starring Captain Jack Sparrow, Barbosa, and Davy Jones. Now these three guys are out sailing the Caribbean looking for what's called the Kraken's Bane, which is an actual toy you'll be able to install on your ship to control and summon the Kraken whenever you want to. So the next piece then is Incredibles. Now Incredibles is one that was near and dear to my own heart. I've been wanting this for a long time. I love this movie, but I really love it because of the gameplay that it brings to this. We have a great combat system that we've been able to put in here. You are a superhero inside of Metroville. From a story perspective, we're able to create a new, uh, kind of slightly different ending to the story where you get to go through and defeat Syndrome. Now the thing that's cool about this is we were able to go back in the archive, and if any of you have actually seen at the D on the DVD at the end of it where there's all of these backstories and there's these cool villains that the film team came up with, we were able to bring a few of those villains to life and let you defeat those guys too. It's awesome. Yeah. And it's to John's point, I mean, that's, that's one of the things that we're trying to do with Infinity is expand the fiction, expand the stories. And we've actually done that also with, if you'll roll the next slide, the Lone Ranger playset. So this is a brand new adventure. There are some Lone Ranger fans in there. Great. Brand new adventure starring Lone Ranger and Tonto. And it's a total blast because you've got horses and you've got trains and it's set in the old west. I mean, who didn't dress up as a cowboy growing up? Now you can have a brand new adventure with these great characters inside of the Lone Ranger playset. So the last place that we've already announced that we're going to go over is Cars. You know, in Cars, we've got all of our, all the gang, welcome to Cars, <laughs> yeah. we've got the whole gang. From both the first film and the second film, we take uh, all of our friends from the international scene, we invite them back into Radiator Springs, we create new racetracks, we put in a whole new stunt system for this one. So when you're expanding the story here, it's how do you get all those people in so that you can defeat Chick Hicks as well as Francesco Bernoulli. So enough talk, why don't we take a look at the play sets right now.
play sets. The five play sets that you've seen right there are available at launch. But today, of course, because it's D23, I do something special for you guys. So I think we are finally ready to reveal the sixth play set. Mr. Blackburn, I'd like to do the honor to announce Toy Story, everybody. Toy Story 3, the game, and we started off with doing that in Woody's Roundup. So this time around, we're going to go to space, and we're going to go to Buzz Lightyear's world, where you can actually play as Buzz, Woody, or Jesse in, a, in an adventure where you help the aliens repopulate a new planet. Let's take a look. <laughs> inside Disney Infinity, you can, you can do that. So John and I actually put together a few uh, a few clips of, of things that we did together. So that's usually how we start out kind of playing our toy box sessions. Is we go through and say, hey, what do we want to try to do today? Can we go in and do that? So, you know, just a while back we went through and uh, came up with, hey, how about if we just go through, make a world where we can have a simple race. But then, all of a sudden, Buzz Lightyear stole Mickey's jalopy and this turned into a huge cops and robbers adventure. <laughs> That's one of the fun things about this, is things kind of change when we go through and start playing. <laughs> so then for the next one, it was all about maybe doing a duel with the Lone Ranger. And so I picked the Lone Ranger and he grabbed the goo gun, but suddenly... But I brought in Sully on Tantor and then we made it into a joust instead, because that seemed like a fun game. So, with that said though, Toy Box isn't always about combat. Sometimes I can... <laughs> And so, uh, you know, maybe you can do that if you'd like to as well. Um, John? Then, you know, guys, right, like cars, we thought it might be fun to do kind of a monster truck rally, right? So you got made her nice and big, put some monster truck tires on them. But jumping over buses is so lame that we had to actually take it up a notch, and we went with lava and flaming hoops in this one. <laughs> so just to make sure that it was really cool. So those are just some of the things that, that we've done inside the Toy Box. And you can play multiplayer online up to four players inside the Toy Box and collaboratively build together if you want to. We're going to show you a quick video now of some of the new creations that have come up inside the Toy Box. Please. So what we've got here is we're showing the editor in the Toy Box. The editor is something that we thought needed to be really simple, but we wanted to give that creative power to everybody so we knew that it had to be extremely powerful. We've literally got thousands of pieces in here that you can put together and, and make your own world. We wanted this to be easy so it could be really expressive when, when you were building this. And the cool thing about it from our perspective is you can build things in a lot of different games. A lot of games you can build, you know, simple worlds. You build a lot of houses. It was Disney. We wanted to bring the magic. So we built castles. 
Now, as uh, someone that's been working on this game for quite some time and in desperate need of vacation, I've been daydreaming inside the toy box and thinking about the perfect beach getaway. So what you're seeing right here is the toy box that I was building where I was putting down a fun pirate ship to play on and, and decorating the world so I could actually go on kind of a little bit of a virtual vacation. So what you're seeing here then is we also think about technology when we look at this. So when I think technology in the toy box, I start thinking about these Toy Story and space pieces. So I went ahead and started to build my own version of Tomorrowland that I thought would be pretty cool. But I think what it really needed was the Matterhorn and a water slide, and then I thought it might be fun if we actually used our imagination to extend the ride with different ride pieces. So, so then you say, what happens when you take all those things together? Storytelling, creativity, and technology. You take all those worlds and put those together, and I hope you might recognize what we built here. This is where all those things come together in Disney, and we built our very own version of Disneyland in this. So. And, one last thing. We are happy to announce that our version of Disneyland, the Toy Box, will be available for download at launch. Let's take a quick look at some Toy Box montage, please. on all the cool things in Disney. Now we've already shown you the new Toy Story and Space Play set and we've showed you that you're going to be able to download a custom toy box version of Disneyland uh, at launch. But there is uh, one thing I think most of you want to hear about and it's what are some of these new characters that are coming to Infinity? <laughs> Mr. Blackbird, would you take the honors on introducing so here we go. Uh, he's original scarer. He's a pumpkin king himself. Coming out this time for the holiday. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. We had a uh, a lot of requests. Exactly. Where are you? <laughs> Welcome the first Disney princess to join the Disney platform for fun. So I've also heard a lot of things about, you know, how could we make a video game about characters from Disney without doing the ones that start in their own movies? So, ladies and gentlemen, we've got Rebecca Rebecca Street. And from the Disney Channel. Alright, and then the last, the last characters that John and I are going to be announcing here today are from Walt Disney Animation Studios upcoming holiday release, Frozen, we've got Princess Anna and Elsa. And so there you have it, the latest characters that are coming to the Infinity platform.
guys so much. We are so excited about these characters, and we hope you're excited as well. Thank you. Okay. So with, with a product that's this great, we want to make sure it reaches as many people as possible. And we know that you all want to access Infinity from a broad range of smart, interactive devices. Today we want to share a sneak peek at some of Disney Infinity on mobile. Now we're going to have two separate apps available for Disney fans. The first is called Action, and will be a free app that allows you to interact with Disney Infinity characters in a really fun way. So let's take a quick look at some examples. Now, I think you guys have gotten to know John Vignacchi here a little bit over the last half hour or so. You can see that he sort of fashions himself, I would say, as a bit of a tough guy. So earlier today when I was here rehearsing, I wanted to kind of take a little, a little shot off my own phone, and I created my own uh, action video, just proving how really tough or not tough he is. Let's take a look at what I shot. One scares at D23, this guy, this guy. No! You know, so I got him back, though. You know, Pleasance was off doing one of his big executive phone calls, and so I snuck up on him backstage. Let's take a look at what I got. Tell us about a few things, Captain. Watch this! Where to go. I actually missed that being done. I guess the, the combination of Jack Sparrow and John and Yaki is one definitely to avoid. Um, anyhow, Disney Infinity Action will be available in the App Store next week. We will, thank you. We will also offer a tablet app that allows you to create, play, and edit your Disney Infinity toy boxes while you're on the go or away from the big screen. We will provide more information about this app on Tuesday when we officially announce it, but rest assured it will be fully connected with the console experience and also with our physical toys sold at retail. Now we have one more thing we want to show you that has never been seen outside the company. The introduction to Disney Infinity. Now we've told you all about Infinity quite a bit in the last bit of time, and you understand now what we know. You're inside it. You understand how it works. You see the potential. And you know what we know. But imagine for a moment that you don't know anything about the game, and you need to understand what this is all about in just a few short minutes. That is our challenge with the first user experience, and it is the mission for this game's introduction. Introductions are always key in games. They teach, they teach the basics, and they set the tone right out of the gate. But in the case of Disney Infinity, this vast new world, it's particularly important, as we need to teach players the basic controls and logistics but also convey an appropriate sense of expansiveness, possibility, and magic that you all have now experienced. There was only one way we could think to achieve this. We had to make you, the guest, the spark of imagination in the game. Let's take a look at the introduction to Disney Infinity. And please note, what you will see is actually a playable experience. You start as a spark of imagination and evolve into a translucent figure that then encounters and transforms into the many of your favorite Disney and Pixar characters that guide you along the way. This is about seven minutes long, but we think you're gonna love it. You can please roll the video. Every great idea begins with a spark of imagination. Thank you. 
dois.
we have one more character to announce today, and it's the leader of the pack. If you haven't heard the rumors, you probably caught it, some of this in the introduction, but today we are happy to announce that the apprentice, Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey, is in the game. here at D23, and he will be available at retail in January. We want to thank all of our talented cast members. just might be one more thing. And the fact is, it is true. I said earlier that Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey game, the game piece, will be available publicly in January. But that is unless you are an Ultimate Disney fan and sitting in this arena right now. Please stop by the Disney Interactive booth and try him out in game. Thank you very much.